Okay, let's bring our meeting to order. <coughs> Commissioner Murdoch, please. Uh, pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Did we start too soon? Okay. Uh, the uh, this meeting is uh, a public meeting. Uh, if you look around, we're really fortunate to have a room like this to meet in. I met last night in the Willow County Board of Commissioners room, and it is a disaster. <laughs> so they're getting about two million dollars to remodel it, but uh, they've converted the jail to offices and and they they moved the jail but it uh, you, you're walking over pieces of wood and debris and and saws and extension cords so we're really pretty lucky well this is the department that built it so that's a good thing <laughs> yes all right so just that just uh, <laughs> let no one forget so we got rid of the cord <laughs> saws and all that kind of stuff. Okay, moving on. Awards and recognitions. Uh, Commissioner Murdoch. Okay, we have a bit of a surprise this morning. Uh, we're taking time to celebrate a very special occasion. Uh, it's hard to think about the Stafford Hansel building and not think about Israel because the two are synonymous. The courthouse in Hermiston is set up a bit differently than the courthouse in Pendleton, so the only constant in terms of overseeing that facility is the presence of Israel on the main floor. As Court Security Officer Roy Drago noted in suggesting Israel be honored, I truly believe he is the only person in the Stafford Hansel building that cannot be replaced. He is known here as Mr. Do It and Mr. Fix It. While our maintenance staff gets to Hermiston for regular maintenance projects, on snowy mornings in addition to opening the building, Israel gets to make sure the walks are cleared and safe. He handles all traffic coming and going in the building, supports county officials who are working in the building, and handles patron requests for county services. This list could go on, but while Israel does all these things willingly and skillfully, it is his personality and general presence that set him very much apart. In short, he does everything he, we could possibly hope for in presenting a positive image for Umatilla County. I know Israel would like me to go on and on and on in great <laughs> detail. <laughs> well, let me stop here and point out the milestone in his life that is part of this celebration. Last month, Israel became a U.S. citizen. As I noted earlier, Israel is everything we could hope for in terms of a model representative of our county. Let me now add to that, Israel is also everything we could hope for as a model U.S. citizen. Israel, we thank you for your 11 years of service to Umatilla County, and we applaud you for your most recent accomplishment. Umatilla County is very, very proud of its diversity, and we are pleased you are part of our family. And you can look around and see your family. If you had come up, I have a certificate of achievement and uh, a copy of my comments signed by all three commissioners. I want to say one more thing, too. Israel does an, he also exemplifies dedication to the job. There's not very many employees that are willing to go to the links of being arrested, almost, or doing their job duties. We uh, also employed Israel to pick up our ballots, and he was trying to clean out the ballot sheet one time. And the cops were called. They thought he was doing the ballot sheet. So he had to call me, and I had to... Uh, explain that no, he's one of our workers, that's why he has the name tag. <laughs> but also we do marriage licenses. He started doing that down in 
uh, Hermiston, we wanted to do, he asked about passports, and we said, well, you have to be a citizen. And dedication, I think that might be one of the things, too. He says, well, I'll go and become a citizen, and so I can do, <laughs> do more here. With that, though, now that you're a citizen, you're also able to vote in this country. Here is a voter registration card. You just need to sign it. You just need to check uh, what party you want to be a member of or no party. If you want help, I'll help you. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's putting together a little pin here to put on your refrigerator that says you voted. There's some stickers to go along with that, too. So. Yeah, we can put those in there and take those. Thank you. Israel, thank you. Congratulations, Israel. Also, apologies to Jolene since there was uh, an indication she was being honored this morning, which brought Israel from Hermiston. So, apologies, Jolene. We still love you. <laughs> Do we have any other awards or recognition? Well, you might tell them they're welcome to stay, but they don't have to. Thank you. I think they've already decided. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't that neat? Thank you. All right. Uh, we have minutes from August the 16th. Mr. Chair, I move that we approve the minutes of August 16, 2017. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay. Uh, do we have any other additions to the agenda? Doug? Yes. I, I would like to add one. I, I, I would like to uh, acknowledge, uh, formal acknowledgement of the service of Dale and Paul uh, as members of the city council, and I'll make a motion to that effect. Can I do that, council? Yes. I would second it. No, not yet. <laughs> oh, I thought, okay, I yeah, thought we were yeah. moving ahead and taking it no, off the agenda. No. Yeah, nope, you can certainly do that. Uh, where do you want that? At the very end of our agenda? Or nine? Is that nine, all right? Yeah. Okay, this is a point in place uh, on the agenda uh, for public input and recognition of visitors. If you are not already... Uh, on the agenda uh, for any purpose. Uh, we have the agenda listed up on our screens. Uh, are there any visitors that want to address the Board of Commissioners this morning? All right, let's move right on. Our first item of business is a land use hearing, and this is an application by the Oregon Department of Transportation uh, for the pit at, at Meacham. Um, as chair of the board, I will go ahead at this time and open the hearing. Uh, the public hearing is for a text amendment, number T16-068. Uh, it's a plan amendment, number uh, P117-16, and zone map amendment Z309-16 and variance V348-17. This application was submitted by the Oregon Department of Transportation, and the standards for approval are found in Oregon Admin Rules 660-023 and-040 uh, through-50, 660-23-01, uh, uh, subparagraph 3, 5, and 7 in the Umatilla County Development Code uh, 152.487-488. Uh, at this time, I'm going to ask for uh, our staff report, and Bob, I'm assuming you're doing that. Okay. Uh, thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Bob Walder, Planning Director. <laughs> So this application um, is for Oregon Department of Transportation. Is Congratulations. Looking, oh, thank you. Uh, they're looking to expand the aggregate resource overlay zone at the Meacham Quarry. Uh, currently, the existing quarry um, consists of 35.7 acres of Goal 5 protected resource. And this expansion um, would add approximately 19 acres to that. Um, but that it's also located over an existing quarry. It just hasn't had received that goal five protection. 
Uh, as you uh, read, Commissioner Givens, the the county development code hasn't been updated for the Division 23 rules for aggregate, so we follow the um, Oregon administrative rules to establish a large Goal 5 significant site. Uh, previous hearings, the Planning Commission met uh, August 24th and recommended um, to uh, approve the um, amendments as well as the variance. Um, as you'll note in the findings, the applicants requesting a variance to alleviate the 1,000 foot setback requirement required for a forest residential zone, which is located um, east of the quarry. Um, there's a map in your packets if you'd like to see that. <clears throat> At the Planning Commission hearing, they did recommend several conditions, and I'll uh, address those here. Um, they asked that we add a condition uh, the ODOT re is required to install a no firearms activity sign at the entrance to the quarry uh, to protect the public from uh, the shooting of firearms. Um, in addition, they ask that um, ODOT be required to comply with Umatilla County weed management ordinances. And then finally, uh, they wanted to make sure that uh, they would adhere to DEQ permits for air, noise, water quality issues, etc. And so those conditions were added to uh, the, these final findings for you today. Um, I believe the applicants here, so um, I'd, unless there's any questions, uh, we can move on to testimony. Okay, do I have questions from my fellow commissioners? Bob, just one thing for the benefit of those who may be reading the record and, and for those who may be tuning in to the, to the video broadcast, mm -hmm. uh, can you state what Goal 5 is? Yeah, so Goal 5 is um, basically it's for the natural resources element of the statewide planning program, and so it would offer protection to protecting this Goal 5 resource, which is a, a rock quarry, so um, it pr protects it into the future. Thank you. And the rock quarry being one of our resource mm -hmm. lands. So. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, at, at this time, those that are going to testify in favor, I'll call on first. Uh, those that will want to testify in opposition, uh, I'll call on next, and then that will give the <coughs> uh, proponents uh, a chance for rebuttal. Uh, also, with my colleagues, uh, is there anyone who wants to uh, <coughs> declare conflict or ex parte communication? Not I. Okay. With that, we'll move into uh, testimony from the uh, proponent. And if you'd state your name and position uh, for the record, please. Patrick Knight um, with ODOT Senior Planner. I think Bob did a pretty good job laying this out. and I don't really have any formal presentation. I'm more here to answer questions. If there are any, try to address those. Okay. Questions? One question. <clears throat> the uh, the operation has been working for many, many years. Is Absolutely. that correct? Mm -hmm. Have there been any problems with it from the standpoint of dust or, or blasting or any any of that anything of that nature with any of the neighbors or any other agency? I'm not aware of any. Um, usually we try to be a good neighbor and work around that stuff and uh, such, but I'm not aware of any complaints. And I am assuming you're coordinating or ODOT's coordinating with uh, Oregon Department of Geology and Mineral Industries on? Yeah, um, both with uh, Doug Amy and DEQ are requirements for us to do that anyway. Okay, great. It looks like you're awfully close to the city of Meacham, and I would suspect if there were major problems, someone would be here. Yeah, and the quarry's been there a really long time, so I think most people are, are aware of it already. Well, it looks like almost adjacent to the community. Real close, yeah. Okay, other questions? Nope. All right, thank you. Thank you. Uh, do we have anyone wishing to testify in opposition? Okay, hearing none, other state agencies? All right, with that, I am going to close the public portion this, of this hearing uh, for <coughs> deliberation. 
Mr. Chairman, I read the documents pretty pretty thoroughly, and it, it appears to be a pretty straightforward request for an operation that's been in existence for a good long time, uh, merely an expansion of that. Uh, noted in the uh, planning commission meeting, there were no there was no opposition at that point either. Uh, so uh, I would be supportive of this. Was that a motion? I I'll make the motion that uh, you did close the hearing, I trust. Yes. In the matter of amending comprehensive plan and adding site to look to goal five aggregate resources inventory for state of Oregon, ODOT, for the Meacham Quarry expansion, I move approval of ordinance 2017-13. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Mm -hmm. uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. And we just need one motion for all those different right. I, okay. Well, I think maybe just to be safe, maybe you might want to just approve the application in full, so that way. Okay. So move in case there's something. Second. Missing. So it's been moved and seconded also that we approve the application in full, including all the uh, uh, evidence and uh, testimony. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay. Uh, the burn ban, uh, Robert, Bob, did did you want to stay at all for the burn ban portion? I was, I was going to visit with Patrick okay, Hill, great. We'll I we'll come back to that. that. We'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, the uh, creation then. We'll come back to the the uh, burn ban uh, after Bob comes back. Uh, the jail position. Lieutenant. Who is presenting that? Lieutenant Hearn. Good morning. So we want to create we, a position. We don't know who you are. <laughs> you have, no, you formally have to identify Lieutenant yourself. Um, uh, we want to create a corrections service specialist position at the county jail. Um, person would be responsible for uh, doing classes, doing uh, assessments, and uh, getting people set up for uh, alternative forms of custody uh, outside drug and alcohol treatment. Um, we do um, plan on uh, Lipsick is, is uh, we're working with community corrections to get a uh, grant and all the money that we spend on this uh, will be reimbursed. Okay, questions. What, what percent of the uh, population would you say this would this would impact? Uh, the target population is the 1145 inmates, which is we've got Ranges. 28 of them. Good morning, Commissioners. Dale Primer, uh, Director, Umatilla County Community Justice. This is a, um, a continuation of the conversation we have had as it relates to justice reinvestment planning. Um, we've this is, this is a position that existed last biennium that expired with the, the closing of the Justice Reinvestment Grant in June of this year. Um, the jail has been interested in maintaining that program and those services and have uh, carved out some, um, some money that they've got to bridge the gap until the Justice Reinvestment Grants are reviewed and approved October or November. Um, as Thorne said, we're, we're, our primary target population is, uh, with this position, is to, um, to identify the 1145 population. So 1145 means the people who are serving felony sentences in the county jail for a period of less than one year. Primarily these are people who are on pro or were on probation that have had that probation revoked due to for compliance in the community. The, the intent is to have somebody in the jail who is delivering services for that population, delivering group services that target cognitive behavioral therapy as well as motivation, and coordinates post-release services. So by the time they get out of the jail, there's no gap or delay between release and service delivery in the community. So that's the position. Um, in the past, that's been a contracted position, and through some back and forth and planning with, with um, Stuart Harp, HR, and some of the others, 
Um, you know, when you start contracting and having positions that cross departmental lines, sometimes the authority and supervision, those things get blurry. Um, and in this particular case, where the person is, is delivering COG-based services, there's no need for a CADC, so there's no need for the sheriff's office to go outside of the organization. They can hire within the same way that we have with community corrections in similar positions. So that's what the position is. That's the position description you have. Um, it's a position that's already in the collective bargaining agreement, so there's no need to negotiate a new classification. That's basically the gist. Hey, Commissioner Elfrin is the liaison to your department. Have you sat down with the liaison and had a thorough vetting and discussion of this? Actually, this involved, <clears throat> I think maybe because of where it emanated from, uh, legal counsel, myself, uh, Dale, Captain Harp was at the fo uh, had a lengthy conference and meeting on this. And uh, Commissioner Elfring and I met earlier this week and um, I discussed it at, at length with him then as well. Okay, and everyone's in agreement. <clears throat> yeah, my question actually pertained to the to the number of, of uh, patrons and people in the jail uh, who are in need of this service, and uh, that percentage, I think, throughout the country runs rather high. And uh, that's the reason why such programs are stepping up and, and, and those types of, of programs have been created in order to do that. And this just really puts us in line with that. And uh, uh, the more that we can, the more that we can treat those who have mental limitations, uh, the better that we're going to be perhaps on recidivism and uh, the lower our costs should should become uh, the less that we that we have to to serve at the jail uh, the less our expense so that was my question as to so the percentage the, yeah the 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 um you know, the jail runs roughly 200 people in there at any given time. Our 1145 population, the population I described to you a few moments ago, <clears throat> runs around 30. So that's really the target population, although sometimes bringing these position, positions in create a capacity that can treat more than just that one population. So while the tar primary tar target population is, is those 30, and as you might imagine, out of those 30, maybe only 20 of which are motivated or are in good enough standing within the jail to be allowed to move and to go to groups and to be an inmate worker and all the things that come along with being in programming. So it does offer some capacity, but I'll remind you this is, this is one of two positions we're going to be talking to you about. The Justice Reinvestment Program um, approved two positions for within the jail. One, to be a direct service provider, that's this. The other one is for somebody who can do some of that clinical work, who can do the what they call the ASAM, <clears throat> I forget what it stands for, but to do the uh, alcohol and drug assessments so they can look at proper placements. The other one, the other component of that will be somebody who does what, the, what they call a psychosocial, which is a mental health evaluation for people who are in jail where perhaps jail is not the appropriate place based on their mental condition and that person will coordinate the release or you know the, 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 the appropriate treatment components whether that's residential community with lifeways whatever um, so that was the approach with justice reinvestment for this particular biennium was kind of twofold one is the direct service provider to close the gap between service delivery between the jail and the community and the other one is those people who come to jail who might need a higher level of care, residential treatment, and or are or, or mentally ill <clears throat> languish in the jail until the mental health services catch up. So those are the two positions. I would imagine the second position, though, the sheriff probably will not have the capacity to deal with that with, with a deputy or a specialist. That will have to be somebody much more specific with special training and services. So that one will probably have to go to RFP. But... Um, we'll look toward that once the actual grant is approved. Okay, other questions? I, I would move, move, move approval. Second. Been moved and seconded for approval. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, let's jump back to number two, our burn ban. Bob, do you have anything to add on this this morning with all this rain? 
don't. It's my understanding that it's for um, an order to remove the a non agricultural burn ban as well. Yes, uh, I I was aware uh, all the well most of the force yesterday when I was headed for enterprise for the force meeting. Most of the forests were either at a moderate or a low uh, fire danger. So it's made a huge difference. Willow Mountains had snow. Mm -hmm. uh, there'd been a little skiff of snow in the Willow Valley, but of course it was gone. Uh, whopping hot temperature of <coughs> 41 degrees. So uh, anyway, so this is for removal of the burn ban. Uh, I would uh, entertain a motion. Mr. Chair, in the matter of lifting a temporary ban on burning in Utah County, I move approval of Order BCC 2017-063. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we uh, remove the temporary ban <coughs> for uh, both residential and, and field burning for uh, Utah County. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. All right. And we've got the go-ahead to go out and... Hopefully not torch it, huh? Torch too many things. <laughs> so far yeah. we've got an authority to rock and burn. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, the Veterans Administration reclassification. Who is presenting that? Well, well I'm not sure the department head was notified. I'm not sure if she's around or available or not. I certainly can because I participated in the conversations uh, relative to this, uh, <coughs> working on their budget, working on their organization, and so forth, and, and met two or three times with them and signed off on it. I don't suppose they saw a need to come today because... Uh, I, told, I probably told them at the time I would carry it forward. Uh, both of our veteran services officers are now veterans. They are now certified. Uh, our veterans department is uh, being applauded by the state of Oregon for the quality of work it's, be, it's doing. Uh, if you will remember, it hasn't always been operated quite as smoothly as it is right now. Um, and I think we're we're thrilled with with the kind of work we're doing. Um, as I recall, in the last everybody, in the last three years, we have raised uh, the amount of benefits coming into the county by six million dollars. Uh, so they're they're making a significant impact. They're maintaining an office presence in. Uh, Pendleton, Milton Freewater, and Hermiston. So all in all, uh, I'm very, very happy with what the veterans are doing. This is a one range uh, movement acknowledging their certification. So I would move uh, authorization to move forward. Second. Been moved and seconded. I, uh, I would add, I've, I've heard some really positive, good positive comments about uh, the uh, veteran services and being able to co connect with veterans out there in our yeah, unfortunately unfortunately too often uh, no news is good news and and within the short time I've been a commissioner four years um, half of that time was spent uh, on the other side of the coin and so when, when it wasn't going this wonderfully so uh, I'm happy to support this we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. All right. Uh, public health position. Are you? I think, Doug, well, it's pretty straightforward. Do you want me to do it? You do it. Go ahead. I don't have the sheet. <laughs> oh, there we go. Uh, this is a grant program um, that uh, would support this position. Uh, we're hiring it based on the grant. It has to do with uh, addressing prescription drug overdoses and prevention, um, and it coordinates this effort outside of our county in Umatella Union, Baker, and Mal here. Um, we're happy that it comes with uh, $95,500 $95, in support. 
um, this request is being submitted by Alicia Southwick. I applaud Alicia for her continued good work and efforts to secure funding that helps support the Public Health Department's mission. And so uh, I would move that we uh, approve this position, but uh, that we also tie it to the grant. Second. It's been moved and second that we support the <clears throat> position, but uh, the cost to uh, be tied to the grant, which we generally have to do anyway. But with that, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion Well, carries. we generally try to tie it to the grant, but I think Robert will tell you we sometimes forget. <laughs> okay, the next item is the uh, Post Purs Employment in Planning. Bob, did you want to present that? And, uh, we've talked about it, but yeah. give us an update. Yeah, so as you know, we have um, another staff member <laughs> that'll be departing at the end of this month, and uh, he primarily did a majority of our mapping work and rural addressing. And so in an effort to alleviate some of that burden, we are um, asking to bring Julie Alford, who is our uh, cartographer for 30 years, um, bring her back on staff um, on a real limited basis, almost an ad it's as needed. Um, type of um, employment and um, she will be sitting back by the planners and coming in the office on certain days of the week to make maps and um, keep our rural addressing program moving forward and then also as we bring in a new staff person to replace Brandon um, she will help train that person in uh, the GIS programs that we operate. Okay, I would entertain a motion to approve that. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, just kind of a side note, and maybe for an update, we're, have we sent out the uh, notice for that position? It's been posted. It's posted. Yes, the, the position for uh, the Planner 2 GIS specialist uh, was posted yesterday. Okay, And so um, I think we're going to do the first review. I believe it's in three weeks is what it says. So. Great, thank you. And uh, how about our economic development? Uh, it's been posted. Algorithm. Okay, great. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Just uh, Questions? No, I was asking about item seven. I thought I read this morning it was taken off. The what? Which one? The DA position? Mm, no. For item seven? Wasn't there an email this morning about the DA position? Uh, the, this is to resend the approval that was done at last meeting. Oh, okay, okay. I mistook rescind for taking off. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> when I saw that memo, at least I read your memos, Doug. <laughs> so are you presenting that, Doug? Sure. Uh, the, there are two parts to this. Back earlier this month on September 3rd, the board approved at the district attorney's request um, some additional, an additional position and two, re two reclassifications based on additional funding coming through their grants. Um, it has now been, that grant request has been reviewed and discovered that it wasn't quite correct and there will not be any additional funding to cover these uh, changes. So the request is basically rescind all of those earlier actions, creating the new half-time position and then reclassification the other two positions. Okay, do you want two motions on this, or do we need to just do uh, They were originally two motions, so probably best that we have okay. them both rescinded. All right, I would entertain uh, I would, one at a time then. I would move rescinding approval given on September 6th uh, for an additional position due to lack of funding. Second. Been moved and second that we uh, approve the rescinding of the original position offer or creation. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries in the second portion. I move that uh, we rescind the previous action that uh, approved a reclassification of positions in the Umatilla County District Attorney's Office. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded on the 
uh, second portion of that for the uh, uh, review uh, for lack of funding for those changes. All right, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay. Um, the next uh, is the payable for DD and public health. Yeah, there are two separate ones referred to the finance department for board approval. The first one is exceeds the dollar amount uh, uh, to allow the department to authorize it for it. it these are for the wheelchair uh, charge equipment um, and the payables to Clearview uh, mediation and disability resources in the amount of $5,250. The second one is an unusual one from the DD program. It's basically paying for respite care that normally is paid through the state, but due to uh, some action on the part of the county, uh, that paperwork did not get complete. So the, rather than the individual not being paid, the county itself will pay for the, the services. Will that be reimbursed? No, because we did not complete what we needed to. So this okay. is coming out of the county the departments okay any it, 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 any questions can this be done one motion yes okay so moved second been moved and seconded uh, for approval all those in favor signify by saying aye aye aye, aye. motion carries I will uh, say that the addition of the charging stations has brought positive comment I've heard from at least two people that they've seen them, first of all, wondering what they were, and, and then uh, applauding the fact that they were there. Hopefully nobody tries to drive their electric car in to recharge the batteries <laughs> in that. All right. Uh, we're, we're ready for the additions. We voted on that. No. We tried. <laughs> okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. No, we haven't. We haven't. We, we did. What? I no. just made a comment post. post oh, post comment. Okay. No, so I did vote on that. Post voting. Yes. All right. Um, the uh, addition to our agenda that Commissioner Murdoch, you wanted on yes. there was a recognition. Well, we have on occasion uh, supported. Well, first of all, I'll point out that in the in recent years, I think the county has taken a strong position, and I, I believe believe it's been a good one to encourage uh, participation of our employees in both public service and community service and professional service. And I think it's both it has been good for our, our the county to have our employees so actively involved in in those kinds of things. We expect others to do that and even with our events on our boards and and the things we do internally. Um, and I think it's it's wonderful that our, our staff members are agreeable to returning the favor throughout the state and the community. Uh, and sometimes when people have uh, taken positions that uh, extend over a period of time, we have actually taken action to, to support their participation so that every time something comes up, there isn't a question. So uh, including leadership positions and so forth. So the purpose of my motion is to support uh, the participation of um, Paul Chalmers and Dale Primer as members of the Pendleton City Council that would not extend to uh, payment of expenses and it would not extend to uh, situations in which compensation was provided. So uh, with that, I make that motion. I would second that resoundingly. It's been moved and second. Uh, we uh, recognize Dale uh, Premier and Paul Chalmers for their uh, <clears throat> service on the Penland City Council and support them in a non-monetary form for that service. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay. Just Thank you. What's, what's happening next week is uh, Dale and I will be attending the League of Oregon Cities conference in Portland. At the same time, during that conference, is the Oregon Biz meeting for the SIP agreements on the 29th. So I'm going to break away. And so my, my, my talk to George about that is just kind of a blended environment. And just want to ask you to thank you for that. Great. 
I think it's a good practice on, on major on major duties of this kind simply to have us formally acknowledge it, then they don't have to come running in all the time to say, can I do this or that? All right. Uh, did we need an executive session? No. Okay. Uh, with that, we'll move into our commissioner report. Uh, I'll start, George, with you. Well, why don't you two start, and maybe you'll stimulate something on my part. <laughs> okay. Let me start then with our... Uh, yesterday I attended the, uh, as you know, the meeting over in Enterprise uh, with the Eastern Oregon Counties Association, and most of it centered around uh, issues with the Blue Mountain Forest Plan and the current and ongoing issues with... Uh, the fires we've had uh, this summer. Umatilla County has been very fortunate. We've had very little. Uh, prior to my going to that meeting, I met with the fire uh, review committee with the Forest Service and uh, trying to get, they are trying to get more support and more involvement uh, and even from the Fire Defense Board. With that being said, Congressman Walden met with us uh, last evening in Enterprise at the uh, Willow County Courthouse, and uh, the result was uh, to try and get more involvement from U.S. Fish and Wildlife uh, to be at the table. Uh, the National Marine Fisheries uh, and possibly uh, officials with uh, the environment, Environmental uh, Protection a Agency. Uh, with that being said, uh, Jim Pina, the regional forester out of Portland for Region 6, uh, will be meeting with uh, uh, several folks, and that's still to be determined. Uh, but we will be setting up as an association another group meeting to try and flush out and determine what most of the counties want to see in changes with the Blue Mountain Forest Plan. Uh, it was suggested that that be done before we meet again and the, the next meeting uh, with the Region 6 Forester will be after the meeting to determine what we really want to see changed in that plan. Uh, it's been frustrating for the Forest Service, it's been frustrating for the Congressman, his staff, because it seems to be an ongoing changing issue. Uh, the Counties Association will be meeting with uh, Roger Lord, who has a scientific background in forest plans, and he'll be helping with that. I ask uh, specifically for that. I also ask that Jay Sullivan, who worked very closely with Congressman Walden on that plan, meet also and help determine uh, what can be changed in that plan without creating such a firestorm uh, on the environmental side that all it will do is create lawsuits. And uh, so there will have to be some give and take. Lau County is very upset about the grazing issue and the uh, travel management side of it. Union County is very concerned about the timber production side of it. Uh, Baker County is concerned about both the timber <coughs> side and the aggregate, uh, the mining side of it on on federal lands and uh, will allow, uh, or excuse me, Malheur County is concerned about the timber production. Uh, we have concerns about grazing here in Umatilla County and access to those gra grazing and some of the requirements for stubble height. Uh, in attendance was uh, Union, Willow, Umatilla, uh, Morrill County, uh, Grant County, and Harney County. We had no one from 
Malheur County there, but on the uh, Baker County wasn't there. Uh, Baker County was there. Uh, on the Malheur, uh, they had sent comments. So uh, Baker County also is concerned about control of any of our federal <coughs> uh, we're going to have to work with some of their feelings that they want to get all federal control out of Baker County so is there a way that we could have a conversation at one of our staff meetings about a, a position for Umatilla County relative to these issues without signing on to some of this other fall or all that happens uh, with our neighbors I yeah I we do need to discuss that because one of the things we found yesterday in that meeting not one single county had the same issue well Lau County wanted us to sign on to a letter they had sent and that doesn't fit uh, Umatilla County's philosophy nor did it fit with uh, Grant County so we're starting to see a fracturing of all the different counties and, and that's why Congressman Walden said he, he just kind of put his head in his hands and shook his head and he said you folks need to figure out what you want and that's exactly right you can't have 16 different philosophies included in a, a forest plan and there is not consistency with the administration either the new forest chief Tony took wants some different ways of managing federal land we have some district foresters uh, and this is not just Oregon this is across the West that have indicated that they're not sure how they're going to change their program and it was pointed out that the forest district rangers in the the mal here uh, on some of Harney County's ground do things much differently than the district rangers out of Willow County one will say sure go ahead and, and we'll do those uh, treatment options on on land and timber and, and even on grazing and another district will say absolutely not so there's a real inconsistency <coughs> and that's creating some problems I think the operative term is management well it, I'm not sure that absence of management is management yeah and and that's a difference in philosophy too some don't want management some want more uh, more uh, wilderness uh, areas and it it's a philosophy that is put out there from each of the district rangers and now we're seeing a great inconsistency in how each district ranger operates their forest and it's creating some real problems. <clears throat> well, Mount, I should say four supervisors. Mount St. Helens erupted 35 years ago. The private lands are almost ready to reharvest. Yes. The federal lands still look like a moonscape, and yeah. I'm not sure why we'd want to preserve a moonscape, but and, just an example. And a lot of this ends up being, uh, we, we talked about the environmental side of things, and the ability uh, for those groups to stop the entire process due to in court injunctions and lawsuits and uh, in the house side they're working on how they can remedy some of this filing lawsuits and the costs that it's putting on agencies from our standpoint it would uh, I can see the congressman's frustration that uh, we have a mul multiple counties coming together for a meeting and multiple ideas on what to do and some of them diverging from others so we'll get nowhere without a without a unified voice that's exactly right and uh, they have expressed concern that the entire <clears throat> forest plan uh, that's being worked on they'll scrap it 
and go with the plan from 1990, uh, which is another creation of problems in view of what society is working on now with, in each community. But the, the difference in the, the philosophies from forest to forest is evident, totally inconsistent. Also, the difference in socioeconomic values in each of the different counties heavily involved. Um, and it really boils down to the issue of what each county views as an economic stimulus for their county. Uh, Willow County, the economics are grazing and ranching, some logging. Union County, huge in the, the logging. Baker County is trying to bring back uh, the logging and the mining. Uh, but again, we have environmental groups that are able to stop the whole process. So uh, that battle goes on. I will continue to work on that with uh, Congressman Walden and, and Jim Pena and uh, our Eastern Oregon Counties Association groups. Bill? So I, uh, it's good to be post Roundup. Roundup is always a, a lot of fun and a major event and uh, it's a good chance, it's almost like a, uh, a form of a family reunion. You see people that you haven't seen for the, for the a long time. Uh, now we're moving ahead. Um, tomorrow I speak to the Rotary Board, or the Rotary, the Realty Board in, uh, in Boardman. That's a combination of two Realty Boards, uh, primarily addressing the fact of, of the economic growth that we are seeing come and the problems that are resulting from it, specifically the, the lack of housing to house people who are going to be working in Umatilla County and the number of people who are going to be needed in the workforce, we're short in workforce now, and how we, how we might remedy that, and uh, transit uh, issues to get employees to work from wherever they may be. So there's a, a number of, of different spin-off problems. Uh, later that morning, uh, we have a very rare opportunity to tour a, a data center at the, uh, in, in Umatilla, uh, if you did note that, that the, chain, the location has been changed from Boardman to Umatilla. And that's and 10 o'clock. 10.30. 10.30. is when it's scheduled for. Uh, and we're certainly welcome to join with the congressman in doing that. Uh, Friday, I have an appointment with uh, Lori Wyman from, uh, from PAC Power uh, to, number one, find out where we really are with power issues in, in the, uh, for economic development. In this in this area, uh, there are many different points of view as to whether we have enough or don't have enough, and uh, I want to get go to the source and find out. So that'll be on Friday. So things are moving. Okay, George. I don't remember. I have a whole the calendar's full, but I don't remember what's on it. Okay. Robert, anything to add this morning from your? Uh, not at this time. Thank you. Okay. The cake was good. Very good. All right. With that, uh, we are adjourned. <laughs>